Welcome to another Earth Engine tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do machine learning in Google's Engine. More specifically, how to do unsupervised classification. Let's get started. So first, uh, you need to install the GEMAP Python package. You can follow my previous tutorial how to install, or you can uh, go to the installation section and follow the instruction to install the package. After that, you can uh, clone the GitHub repo, or you can uh, go to the examples folder, notebooks, and then number 31. Uh, click this one. Then if you click the raw button, and right click, save as, and then you can save, for example, I, I can uh, save this one to my downloads folder. Click save. Then uh, it's under the downloads folder. Once you have the notebook, then you can uh, use uh, Conda to launch the Jupyter notebook environment. So I'm going to just Conda activate the EMAP and then Jupyter notebook. Hit enter. And you can open the uh, notebook. I'm going to get into my downloads folder. And then you can open the notebook maximize okay so in here we're not going to go through step by step uh, let me uh execute this one first execute this one also why the image doesn't show up in here back to here Okay, this one shows up uh, correctly anyway so um you can click the link here to go to the uh, earth engine uh, website to look at the more information but i copy some of the information in here in this video we're going to talk about unsupervised classification so for unsupervised um the package is under uh, ee dot cluster so if you see this one from here there's one called uh, class classifier this one is for supervised classification and this one is for unsupervised so we're going to do this one uh, in here as you can see there are one, uh, five um, different uh, cl uh, clustering algorithms and uh, the most common one probably is the k-means uh, that means um, you can specify a fixed number of clusters and then the algorithm will, will uh, automatically execute and uh, give you the number of uh, clusters that you specify you can also try the for example x means this one you can set a minimum and also a maximum number of clusters and then the algorithm will uh, figure out the optim uh, optimal number of clusters uh, automatically for you in uh, today's uh, video we are going just to use the k means but you are welcome to uh, explore other um, clusters algorithms so next let's go through step by step how to do unsupervised uh, classification uh, with google's engine so first you need to import the library right and once you import the library uh, you can create an interactive map and next we're going to load some data so in this example i'm going to use a uh, lane set data and um, you can for example i can set a point um, you can this one you can change to any location you want uh, any, any, anywhere and the longitude and latitude so this is um, just uh, one example and then from there i'm going to um, use the lane set 8 a service reflectance data and then you filter uh, the boundary by this point so basically select uh, any lane set data uh, intersect this point and i'm going to use data from uh, last year so january the first to december 31st after that i'm going to sort these images because there should be uh, at least 20 30 or 40 images available for this location and then i'm going to sort this one by cloud cover and uh, select the first one so the, the least cloud cover is image and then I'm going to select uh, band 1 to band 7. Uh, and then I can set the symbology how I want to show this uh, the imagery and then add to the map. So 
just execute and close. Okay. So this is the Im imagery that we just selected uh, as a line set uh, 8. Which if you can see from here, is around cargo uh, near the Great Lakes. We're going to use this imagery for to do unsupervised classification. Once we have the um, once we have the, the the data, then we can take a look at some uh, properties. But this one is not needed. And so you can use the function called image uh, props to check the property because um, we do the filter. We know this is 2019, but we don't know exactly what day of this imagery. Sometimes you might want to know. So it would be helpful to um, check all the image properties. So for example, cloud cover. Three uh, percent, and there must be another one here. Image date, uh, twenty nineteen July twelve, and so this gives you all the information, all the metadata. And if you want to get a specific one, you can use the dot get function, and then the name of the property. Uh, property. So for example, uh, image date, right? It comes from here, and then cloud cover. Similarly, it's going to be all three okay so once you have the data and you also know some metadata then we can go ahead and do a uh, clarification before we can do that um we need to do, have some training data so um in order to create the training data then this is unsupervised if it is supervised clarification you might already have the training data but for unsupervised we can just simply use some random uh, selection so what we are going to do is to randomly select some points on the imagery and then use that to train the uh, uh, classifier so how can we create the training data uh, and use this uh, all block in here so I'm going to show you uh, what this one means so the image dot sample that means we have this image in here we're going to randomly sample the points and it depends on um, the, the, your area. You can, for example, I can draw a rectangle in here. And I only want the uh, random sample points to come from this rectangle. Uh, that's fine. Um, you can also, for example, have a point and then you can have a, a buffer. So you basically can have all kind of a shape you want. And you, you also, if you don't want to, you don't have to specify. So. Here I provide a couple of ways that you can specify the, uh, the the reason. So basically, where do you want the training data to come from? You can draw a rectangle and then use the map dot user ri. I can show you. Uh, let me be in here. If I use the map dot ri and then dot get info, this one we show you. Um, the rectangle that we just drew so it basically is a polygon okay so if you want you can use this one you can also directly define a rectangle or you can define a point into the buffer okay since this is a small image i i don't have to specify if you want you can control states right so from the the imagery in here and then you will just uh, generate the points from this one i can show you right so we already define we can uncomma this one. So now I want the training data to come from this region. Okay, I can execute this line, execute, and you will add the training data. So now you see the, based on the rectangle, the training data is actually within this region. And you need to zoom in because uh, there's a lot of points. So we select 5,000 points. And based on the spatial resolution uh, 30, the seat here is the, um, like the random, so we, sometimes you want to control uh, if you set a specific number, every time you will be the same. Uh, if it, uh, you can also set the geometry. If you don't set, if you don't want this, if you have a lot of points, you might not want to show it. Um, but I'm, I used uh, this one just to show you where the points come from. But in, in real world application, you don't have to show the geometry. If you don't set this one or set to false, then you won't have the points. You will just uh, get the values. These are the five um, hundred points that we use. You can also, for example, I can change to 
you don't want to and comment out this one and then I hit one again it should drain all the points from all the uh, the entire region so if you see from here now the points all come from the entire area so once we have the points then we can train the uh, cluster rule so in order to do that you need to specify because we are going to use the uh, way car k-means and you need to specify how many how many number of uh, clusters you want in here i'm going to just simply use five it's up to you you can use three or four or up to ten or or twenty okay uh, depends on the specific application we're going to use five and then so this one is so to train the data because this is the training data set that we have so each point is going to have seven values like right? so from band one band two all the way to band seven so each pixel have uh at each point here has seven values associated with this point right and then we're going to use this one in here passing this one e dog uh, class or uh, dog way car k means uh, i want five clusters and then i use the data that we get from the uh, step above to do the training okay one once we have the uh, cluster rule then we can do the classification so very simple image right so this is the image and there's a, a function called cluster within the function you need to provide the cluster rule so it comes from here right so you, you have this basically is a classifier and we're going to classify this image using this classifier and then you have the results once you have the result we can uh, all the results let's just do it quickly in here now you see you have this super uh, unsuper unsupervised uh, classification um, results and it's using the random visualizer like right? random color so if you see from here and turn this one on and off right. now really quick just a few seconds you get the results and if you want, you can use the inspector to see the value. So I'm going to inspect this one. You see the results from here, the clusters. This is cluster one and uh, cluster two, cluster zero. Keep in mind that um, if you do unsupervised classification, so for example, here we set cluster five, then you're going to end up with five clusters. And the value will be starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? It's not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you need to make sure that you uh, uh, pay attention to this one. So start from 0 all the way to 4. Okay, so we already have this unsupervised uh, classification result. Then so the next step is to basically do the label because in here, we have five clusters but we don't know unsupervised uh, classification doesn't know for example which cluster is water which cluster is uh, urban which cluster is vegetation or forest or grassland or something like that depends on how you want to label so you can use this step to do the labeling uh, depends on how many clusters you specify so we have uh, five clusters in here then we're going to because when we do the labeling, we want to have a legend to add uh, to the map. So you can have the keys, for example, one, two, three, four, five, etc. But because we don't know exactly the value of each cluster, so uh, we're going to come back to this later. But first, let's define like five keys. Uh, it might be, for example, water, urban, or it doesn't matter. Just, just let's just do one, two, three, four, five uh, right now. And for each a uh, class that we're going to assign a label uh, a color to it and like i mentioned earlier the unclassified unsupervised uh, clusters uh, start from zero uh, or we might want to reclassify because when later uh, when we export the results to your computer um, most likely you don't want the, uh, the one cluster to start a value from zero because sometimes it might um, uh, mix with uh, the background value so you always want to get get rid of the zero value so what we do here is to 
reclassify. So from if it is zero, we change to one, or one change to two, or something like that. So similar to um, just do the remapping of the class, and then we can um, add the recluster map to the, the result to the map. So basically, this is the label cluster. Earlier, this one, this is unlabeled yet, so it doesn't have any label. And we also want to add the legend uh, to the map. Okay, so the legend comes from we have the key, we have the color, and then we have the location. Just X here, and then X loop. Now you have this. Um, okay, the, uh, the color is just for uh, demonstration. It might not be a good color, a good selection, but just so give you some idea how you can uh, do the relabeling. If you see from here, we have five items, right? And clearly, this one here, um, the yellow color, this one is cluster two, right? If you use the inspector in here, you should expect to see this, uh, the map, the value is two, right? So if you see from this one here, based on the cluster, this is like uh, water or the great legs, right? So two, this one should be water. And... So if you go back to the source code in here, I can do this one, change to water, right? And you similarly can change the um, the color in here if you want, because this might not be the best color. Uh, so for water, we might want blue color. So let me change this one to blue. So blue uh, RGB, right? So it'd be 0, 0, 0, 0, FF. Similarly, you can do this color for other um, classes, but I'm just going to show you here quickly. Now this one has water. Interesting. Okay, because earlier we already remap, so now if we remap again, so the 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 map changes. So probably we need to go back to this uh, step in here and just do it one more time. Then you should go back to normal. So try this one, see if it works. Okay, so it looks like it works now. So this is now uh, water. And similarly, you can change, for example, to vegetation or other uh, labels. And make sure that you uncomment, uh, comment out this one because you don't want to reclassify the map again. Because we already did it, so now the, the the result is one, two, three, four, five. All we need to do is just to figure out uh, each cluster corresponds to uh, what label, right? So immediately let's find the other one. So how about this? If you you do, for example, this color. Take a look at what color it is. Right, this this is a uh, cluster one. And what let's take a look at what this one is. So this one maybe is just um um vegetation and thanks to vegetation. Okay. So for vegetation we might want this a uh, green color, so RGB. So it'll be zero zero F F zero zero. Okay. And this one this one again. So now you have this vegetation, right? Water. Feel free to um, check the other three clusters and then give them a name, uh, uh, agriculture or uh, develop uh, residential or urban area, something like that. Once you have the, the map, um, we, you might want to, for example, visualize, uh, compare results with the original data so how can we do that uh, in here you can certainly let me uncheck this one if you have the the layer control and turn this one on and off see the results yeah for example in the urban area here turn this one on off You can also use this one here to change the layer of pasty. So let me execute this one. And you have a, a slider in here. So I can change the slider to just to compare the two layers. Zoom out. 
Maybe you can change this one. This gives you a way to visualize your results. Uh, if it is not satisfactory, then you can go back to, for example, change the number of clusters. Um, you can also change the color for each cluster. <coughs> and once you uh, uh, verify with the results and you are satisfied, then you can export the results. So the final result is the, from within this spreadable result, right? So all you need to do, you can export the result to your computer or you can export the result to Google Drive. And the first example here is to export to my local computer. Like I'm, I'm going to execute this one first just to show you uh, what it is. So I'm going to download this file to my local computer under my downloads folder. And within the downloads folder, I'm going to uh, use the file name called cluster.tf. Then you can use this function. The image we want to export, name we want to use, and also the the scale right so the lens set data is 30 meters i'm using 90 meters just to uh, make it faster so that you can, uh, I can open this now you have this in here right so if you want you can uh, open the, the imagery in other software for example uh, qgs or arcgs or once you open and i can drag and drop the data in here you see a two three four Clusters. Similarly, you can export this one to your uh, Google Drive. If you want, you just execute. And then it should show you the. Um, then you need to log into your Google Earth Engine account to see the status of the the task. Okay, that's uh, pretty much all for this uh, tutorial. If you enjoy this tutorial, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also leave comments down below. Hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye bye.